news. The headlines today, delivery of humanitarian aid to Tigray has topped the list of Satterfield's discussions in Ethiopia. The Ethiopian government says it is declaring a humanitarian truce to facilitate free flow of humanitarian aid into Tigray. And Human Rights Watch says an airstrike on school for IDPs in Ethiopia's Tigray region is likely a war crime. U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa says the discussion the delivery of humanitarian aid into Tigray was top on the agenda during his latest visit to Ethiopia. In an interview with Reuters, David Satterfield said that the U.S. has made the delivery of the humanitarian aid to the top priority in Tigray. He added that efforts had, however, been blocked by what he dubbed local elements and said that the Ethiopian government released a statement that after Satterfield's visit saying it will make improvements allowing the humanitarian aid into Tigray. He added that the efforts had, however, been blocked off by what he dubbed local elements. Observers say that the Ethiopian government, which had made similar pledges in the past, is making such a promise to try to get the draft bills of H.R. 66 as well as S-3199 completely scrapped. But in related news and development, the Ethiopian government has said it is declaring a humanitarian truce to facilitate free flow of emergency humanitarian aid into all of the Tigray region. In a statement it issued today, the Ethiopian government said it's taken a decision to ensure the free flow of emergency humanitarian aid to all of those that are in need of its assistance. Cognizant of the need to take extraordinary measures to save the lives and reduce human suffering, the government of Ethiopia hereby declares an indefinite humanitarian truce, which is effective immediately, as the statement stressed. Although Horn of Africa analyst Rashid Abdi expressed its skepticism about the Ethiopian government's humanitarian truce, saying, I'm not going to believe Abdi's humanitarian truce unless I see action, immediate flow of relief, and the end to the siege, as Rashid Abdi wrote on his official Twitter account. The analyst added that these piecemeal steps are familiar and have all proved disingenuous before. The t government of Tigray had a response for the declaration of the Ethiopian government's commitment to end the ongoing blockade as well as the siege. It announced its commitment to implementing a cessation of hostilities effective immediately. The government of Tigray, in a statement it issued through the External Affairs Office, will see through that the commitment, if the right circumstances arise for the people of Tigray, to receive the level of humanitarian assistance commensurate with needs on the ground and within a reasonable time frame, it called on the Ethiopian authorities to go beyond empty promises and take concrete steps to facilitate unfettered humanitarian access into Tigray. While the government of Tigray is committed to the sources and the success of this endeavor, we would like to note that linking political and humanitarian issues are just completely unacceptable. The statement added that for the people and the government of Tigray, for peace, not war, has always been our choice. Even at the moment, war is not our choice. It underlined and also noted that the government of Tigray has repeatedly conveyed this message to all of the relevant stakeholders over the past four years. This is not just because we believe peace to be a matter of survival, but also because we have made efforts to bring it about, as the government of Tigray stated in their statement piece above. The restoration of telecommunication and banking services, among other things, are very simple steps for Abiy Ahmed's government to undertake that would have saved countless lives. The statement added that while the people of Tigray should have received humanitarian assistance provided by the international community without any obstruction, virtually no aid has been allowed into Tigray on the account of the blockade of the region. The government of Tigray in this statement emphasized, nonetheless, the people and the government of Tigray will do their best to give peace a chance.
The government of Tigray said in a statement it also released today through its external affairs office on the murder of MSF employees that will continue to facilitate humanitarian operations by extending the necessary cooperations to all of the partners in operating it currently in Tigray. It also called on Abiy Ahmed's regime to refrain from obstructing aid agencies, humanitarian operations, and allow aid agencies to operate freely, impartially, and independently wherever their services are currently needed. The statement referred to well-documented facts of war on Tigray in which the Ethiopian and Eritrean armies, along with the ethnic Amhara forces, committed unspeakable atrocities against the people of Tigray. And according to the statement, countless Tigrayans have been on the receiving end of extreme vicious extrajudicial killings, even humanitarian workers serving the needy were not spared from the murderous reach of these invading forces. The statement said that back in June of 2021, when the Ethiopian army was suffering a series of decisive battlefield losses, its soldiers murdered three employees of Doctors Without Borders following a direct order from a senior commanding officer for the 31st Infantry Division of the Ethiopian National Defense Force. The government of Tigray had the time told the, at the time told the world that only the invading forces would commit such a heinous crime. Now it is clear that the members of the Ethiopian army murdered Maria Hernandez, Johannes Halfom, and Tedros Gabramariam of MSF. It said that adding that meticulously sourced investigative report by Simon Marks and Declan Walsh of the New York Times published on the 17th of March provides an in-depth account of their murder. The statement noted that the level of evidence provided by and captured by mid-level ENDF commanders leaves no doubt as to the Ethiopian army's culpability. It stated that these brave aid workers were killed while tending the wounded makes their brutal murder especially pognate. This vicious murder is also consistent with the invading forces routine violation of international humanitarian and human rights law. The statement also underlined it pointed out that the three victims were murdered despite possessing clear identifying signs that they were aid workers and therefore to be granted protection under the international law. According to the statement, the horrific murder encapsulates the extent of the perpetrator's brazen disdain for the basic rules and norms governing the conduct of warfare and it represents only the tip of the iceberg of the atrocities committed against the people of Tigray in general. The government of Tigray expressed its sadness at this senseless murder, sent its condolences to the families of the victims, and the government of Tigray also called on the international community to facilitate independent investigations into in any and all atrocities committed in the course of the genocidal war on Tigray. Human Rights Watch says an airstrike on a school for IDPs in Ethiopia's Tigray region is now likely a war crime. Human Rights Watch on, Tuesday, on Thursday released a statement in which it said three bombs were dropped on the 7th of January on a school sheltering displaced Tigrayans in the town of Dedebit, killing at least 57 civilians and wounding more than 42 others. Human Rights Watch urged Ethiopia to probe the attack that it called is an apparent war crime and appropriately persecute those responsible for this crime. The rights watchdog said there were mainly elderly people, women and children sleeping in plastic tents. They're adding there is no evidence of military targets at the site. According to the statement, debris recovered by the survivors and aid workers and the extent of damage and injuries caused indicated that the type of Mam L guided bomb delivered by the Turkish made drone and other light air artifacts was likely the responsible source. Using guided bombs without evidence of any military target indicates that this was an apparent war crime, said Leticia Bader, Horn of Africa Director for Human Rights Watch. She said the Ethiopian drone struck the Dedebit school compound three times, killing and maiming displaced to grinds, mainly older people, women and children included as they slept in plastic sheeted tents and a school building. The attack forced the displaced Tigrayan community, the victims of serious abuses by the Amhara forces in late 2021, to be displaced yet again, as the Human Rights Watch alluded. 
Despite Abiy Ahmed's promise of a swift campaign, the war on Tigray dragged out and has spread, displacing hundreds of thousands of people, fueling a severe humanitarian crisis. The conflict has claimed thousands of lives. Airstrikes are harming civilians, have still continued into the new year of 2022. And in just March, UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet reported that at least 304 civilians were killed and 373 injured between late November and late February in aerial bombardments, apparently carried out once again by the Ethiopian military. The horrific airstrikes on a school parked with displaced people reflects a broader failing by the Ethiopian government to ensure compliance with the laws of war, minimizing civilian harm, as Bader alluded. She said that this unlawful attack should be a reminder to governments selling arms to the warring parties that they too can be found complicit for the foreseeable war crimes that have been committed. As the war and the conflict continues, 75% of Tigray's population is currently facing severe hunger as this war rages on in Ethiopia. An estimated 75% of 7 million population in Ethiopia's war-torn Tigray region have employed extreme coping strategies with food aid, health care, and other basic human needs completely cut off. The war has made it nearly impossible for aid givers to reach communities that are cut off, particularly in the Tigray, Afar, and Amhara regions. The World Food Program said it would fuel and with fuel and food stocks in all-time low, currently particularly in Tigray region, that is an un unable to deliver that the pace and scale necessary to reach those in need. Aid givers estimate that only 30% of the caloric needs of the crisis-affected population were provided for in the past month that to cover those gaps. WFP needs guarantees from all parties to the conflict of safe and secure humanitarian corridors via all routes into the region immediately. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said the situation would most likely get worse in the next few months, particularly because the region's food harvest last season accounted for half the region's need. The deliberate and systematic destruction of health care facilities in Tigray is having a devastating impact on the region's coronavirus response as, and its capacity. Timnit Bayrou has more on this story from Tigray TV. 2021 would see the novel coronavirus sweep around the world, devastating communities everywhere. Until the start of the ongoing conflict in November 2020, Tigray was hailed for its swift response to the health crisis after the region was able to put in place swift protocols to prevent the rapid spread of the virus across the state. The Ethiopian government and its allies have deliberately and systematically destroyed 80% of the health facilities in Tigray. This has made it extremely difficult to respond to, track, or prevent the spread of coronavirus in the region. Dr. Harnet Adana, coordinator of coronavirus prevention in Tigray Bureau of Health, disclosed citing available data that lack of medical supplies caused by the ongoing blockade has increased the prevalence of the virus in Ma'ala by 40%. After the conflict, more than 3,600 people were tested positive for coronavirus only in Ma'ala. So far, 32 of patients have died and this is only in Ma'ala. We couldn't cover other parts of the region as we have run out of basic supplies like fuel due to the siege. Before the war, the spread of coronavirus in Tigray was less than 1%. But after the conflict, it rose by 40%. Especially in the months of January and February, the spread has spiked to 70% in the city. A medical doctor at Ma'ala General Hospital, Dr. Goit Omar Aya, said patients are dying from treatable diseases on a daily basis due to the lack of medical supplies. For instance, when we see the issue in COVID, uh, the incidence was uh, rising, there was no medication, there was no adequate uh, personal protective equipment, and so on. Because of all the hindrances, we had been suffering uh, too much. Uh, for instance, to treat one patient, who is uh, with COVID, uh, severe COVID case, it demands around 1,200 per daily, which is around $25 daily. And you can imagine how many of them can afford this much. Uh, while there is no uh, uh, functional uh, bank, so it was very hard 
we are crying together with our patients, but we cannot do anything beyond that. The health professionals urged the international community to put pressure on the Ethiopian government to open humanitarian quarters into Tigray and end the man-made catastrophe. With the start of the conflict in November 2021, the Ethiopian government discontinued Tigray's annual budget, banking services, and telecommunication, bringing Tigray's economy to a complete standstill and leaving very limited options for the residents of the state. As a result of this, 6.5 million people in Tigray are going through an untold suffering. Some of the hardest hit are civil servants who faithfully serve their communities. Timnit Bayrou has more on this story, again by Tigray TV. The story of Atakal Tahayle, a teacher in Adukdo, in southeastern Tigray, is shared by all civil servants in the region. He has not had his salary or access to any of his savings for months now as a result of the ongoing siege imposed on Tigray by the Ethiopian government and its allies. I depend on my monthly salary for my income before the start of the siege. My family too depends on my income. But now we don't have a salary. I have become bedridden. I am depressed and hungry. Part of Atakalti's salary used to go to support his mom, Afarra Gabra Mariam, who used to depend on pension and the support of her son, which has been discontinued with the start of the war in 2020. We've stopped living. He doesn't have a salary, and that's stressing him further. There's nothing I can do or any place I can go. If he leaves home even four minutes, I feel some sense of hope. Life has become too difficult. Mother and son have served their country for decades only to find themselves in such desperation. Conflict is currently ongoing, but as the war in Ukraine enters its fourth week, Columbus has advocated for who work closely with refugees are urging Americans not to forget other ongoing crises around the entirety of the globe. The Russian invasion that started on February 24th provoked swift condemnation by the international community and a series of sanctions immediately. But conflicts outside of Europe that are also causing large-scale death, destruction, and displacement haven't been treated the same way. And this is according to Dr. Sileshi Asfaw, president of the Ethiopian Tawhado Social Services, ETSS is also a Columbus-based social services agency that offers employment, health, and other programs to new American communities. Working on a daily basis with immigrant residents from war-torn regions, Asfaw, who originally is from Ethiopia, said he has been disheartened by the lack of attention that the Western media and governments are paying to the conflict in other countries, such as Asia, in the Middle East, as well as Africa. When I compare how the international community reacted and mobilized in each case, I see a lot of racism and discrimination. Nadia Kasvin, the pounder, founder of local res, res, resettlement agency, called U.S. together to come together from Ukraine to the United States as a refugee 28 years ago and has been advocating for the swift relocation of eligible Ukrainian refugees amidst this ongoing conflict. She too is calling on the United States government to pay attention to people outside of Europe who are suffering from humanitarian crises amongst many other things. That concludes our news for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.